Hello and welcome back for some more Mathlicious Maths. So here's a video of me just going through the notes one more time. So if you're one missing me, you might want to watch it. Or two, because you can't quite understand what we did today, this could be a refresher for you or just to uh, clear up some misunderstandings. So first of all, um, this is what the quadratic formula looks like, ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. So first of all, we talked about today about how you can recognise the shape. And the special place to look is here. And if you see that A is greater than zero, or it's basically A is positive, what you noticed was that you've got this U shape, or a happy shape. You noticed that if we did A was less than zero, if A was a negative number, what happened was you got the inverted curve. And so lots of times we'll go, well, I've got a positive value, I've got a happy graph, I've got a negative one, I've got an unhappy one, and that's how so many people try and remember it. Okay, when we looked at these shapes as well, we were very good about some of the properties that you noticed. So I'm going to take the two curves here. What one of the moment, uh, one of the things, one of the moments, one of the properties that you talked about was that there is a point here, and then there's a line of symmetry through the shape, and this is a mirror image of the left side to the right side. So you've got here a line of symmetry, all right? Then what people were also saying is that this point here is the lowest or the minimum value for y. It's the minimum y value. But also the curve is going down and it's turning around. So we call this point as it's coming down and around. We call this the turning point. And what we talked about today was how the gradients here are negative, a large negative, and then it gets less and less and less negative until it's zero. And then the slope numbers become in small positive to a larger, 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 larger positive, and the curves carry on into infinity. Okay? But this gives you the smallest value of y. And again, it's a turning point. On this one, the gradient is... Um, here, quite high, a positive one, and as we go up, the steepness is less and less and less until it's zero. Then it's a small negative to a bigger negative to a larger and larger negative in terms of the gradient. In terms of the y values, the y values are going up and up and up and up, and they reach the highest they get to, is here, and then the y values start to decrease. So this is called the maximum. It's actually the maximum y value but it's also where the curve is turning around. So we call it the maximum turning point. The same with this one. The y numbers are decreasing, decreasing, decreasing to the lowest y value it gets to when the y values are going up and up and up and up and just increasing. And then the other thing you want to label is that uh, this one and this line here are just lines of symmetry. And these are all properties that you found in the small groups when you were looking at the data of the ones you've plotted just by using a table. Now, these are the steps we're going to go through to now graph more efficiently. So the first one is always to decide what shape it is. Now, that is great because once you decide which shape it is, you know that you're either looking for a minimum turning point or the maximum turning point. So that's the next thing that you try and work out. Now, I'm actually just going to give you an equation whoops, maximum, minimum, I'm going to give you an equation to use and we'll explain later in the unit where that actually came from. So we're trying to work out the maximum and the minimum and the equation I want you to use is x equals minus b all divided by 2a. Okay, and you use this to get the x value of these two locations. Now, obviously, once you've got the x value, once you find x, you want to know its partner y. So what you do is you substitute x into the equation, because we're just generalizing y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So you just take the x value you've got here and you just pop it in. Uh, you then just do some number work and find the y. What we're after is plotting it, because these are the steps to plot on the graph. Okay, And so we just plot that point on the graph as soon as we find it. Yeah. 
So the other thing though is that at this point is also where the line of symmetry is. Now if you notice you can also you can find the equation of the line of symmetry. And as you see, it is a vertical line and it has an undefined slope. And when we were studying linear equations, we know that if we've got a vertical line, we know the equation is going to be x equals some number. The number being the number it cuts the x-axis. So if you look at this, it's actually going to tell us which number it's cutting the x-axis. So if you use this, x equals whatever that number is, this is also the equation for the line of symmetry, 2 for 1. So what I'll do here is I'll just tip that back. You can write these notes down first and then watch the second board or watch the second board and then write them both down together. So if you want to stop now, do that, make a copy of this, and then I'm going to do the second board for the rest of the properties and the steps we need to do. We've done A and B, and there's still C, D, and E to come. So I'll shuffle you just across. Okay, we'll just move to there. So one of the other things we did when we were studly, stud, studling, studying <laughs> linear equations is we looked at the y-intercept. And when we were in the group work and you're doing your inquiry learning, um, you were telling me how to find the y-intercept. And it's the same method that we use with straight line graphs. So people said, well, what's important about the y-intercept when we look at the graph here? And I think that comes up very clearly on the computer there. So I'm going to write that a bit bigger, better colour. We said that whatever uh, the point is here, the x number is always zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to let x be zero. And then, of course, we've got our general equation here, ax squared plus bx plus c. If I put zero in the uh, x position, zero plus zero is zero. So all you're left with, with is c. So c is actually the y-intercept, and the coordinates are zero c, as it is on the picture up there. We've just lost a little bit of the diagram, I think, when I was using it earlier. Okay, so very quickly you can see what it is. So in, quite, in fact, you can just look at the equation and you can just pick out the y number in the same way when we had y equals mx plus b, you picked out b as the y-intercept. Now the x-intercepts are also known as the roots of the equation. And these are the roots where the curve cuts the um, x-axis. And we talked about already, sometimes it never cuts it, sometimes it touches it just once, and sometimes it cuts it twice. So this will deal with all the situations, and as we go through the unit, you'll understand more about the patterns. So again, when we did x-intercepts for straight line graphs, what did we do? Well, anywhere along this line, the y number is always 0. So we're going to use that one as a substitution. So this time you've got y equals uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. If we let this become y you then should recognise this situation from before. And in our groups today, people did say what we need to do is use factoring. And that is by putting these into parentheses, we might call it brackets, and it's actually doing the work that we did in chapter 10 in the previous unit. There is also something else we can use called the quadratic equation. And I'm not going to show you how I've derived this, but we will be doing this later in the unit, but the formula looks like this. It's quite unusual. But we will deal with that later. But at the moment, I just want you to be factoring. Now, sometimes you will still not have enough points to actually draw the graph, and you might need some more. So the best thing to do is to find some more points. And the way to do that is you pick an x value, just as we did before. You then uh, substitute it into the equation. And we're doing that because we want to find the y value, just as we did at the top up there. And then what you can do is you can plot the x and the y. Now remember, 
you are also going to get a free point because we have got symmetry. So plus plot the free point by using the symmetry and find the other point and put it on your graph and it will reduce half the job, half the work. Who doesn't want that? Okay, so again, uh, if you did copy the first board, copy the first board, then copy the second board, and then you can move on to the video about the example if you need a refresh on how to apply these steps um, with the example. But have these notes ready so you can refer to it as you're trying to do the example yourself, perhaps without my help. Thank you.